one of the most common serious emergencies that come into the emergency department is something called a hemoabdomen. Hemo is blood, abdomen is the abdomen, the belly. And so what we do when we're seeing these patients coming in is we think about some of the common presentations. So an owner may describe that their pet has been very lethargic, panting a lot, maybe having abdominal breathing or looks bloated, and maybe having significant trouble getting up or have collapsed. Those are all signals that you should check the mucous membranes or the gum color in your pet. If it is pale, it may be an indication of anemia or blood loss. It could also mean shock or some different other factors, but regardless, if you see pale gums instead of that nice pink color, you need to get to an emergency hospital. Now, when your pet comes into the door, we're assessing things like their heart rate, their PCV or Paxil volume, basically a count of are they anemic or are their red blood cells a normal level in the body, in the circulation. When there is a bleed into the abdomen or a hemoabdomen, there is still blood in the belly. There wasn't a car accident. The blood isn't out on the road. The blood is still in the body, but it's no longer in the vasculature. It's no longer in the vessel supplying organs. And so that blood is temporarily unavailable for the body to use. As a result, a patient will have changes in vital parameters, their heart rates, their mucous membrane color. Blood gets shunted or sent to all the vital organs and a patient is severely compromised. As you would imagine, this is a very time sensitive manner and matter. And it is so tough because when you come into the to the ER saying, my pet's been lethargic today, kind of non-specific symptoms. Yesterday he was running around, acting normally. Today, boom, just acting off. It's hard to process when someone, a stranger usually gets on the phone with you and tells you that you have a life threatening emergency on your hands and you have to decide between euthanasia or all in potentially blood transfusions, surgery, and the risk that even after all of that effort, all of that financial and just um, physical expenditure for your pet, you may not have much more time with, with him or her. Why is that? Mm -hmm. So taking a step backward, the, the, some of the more common causes of a hemoabdomen include things like a spleen tumor. So the spleen is a very vascular organ, it has a tremendous amount of blood supply, and that's because it actually functions to filter the body's blood cells. It determines um, are, there, are there different things that need to be filtered out. It helps destroying older cells. It helps also with iron storage as those red blood cells are destroyed. It stores those and helps filter things out. When a spleen has a growth on it, whether it is benign, non-aggressive, or malignant, aggressive, that is a very vascular kind of mass. It's very bloody. So you can imagine if that bloody mass breaks open, that's a tremendous amount of blood loss very quickly. Now, that's one reason for a hemoabdomen. Other masses in other locations of the abdomen, like the liver, can, can also have this issue, or things like a coagulation issue, a coagulopathy. So maybe your pet ate rat poison. That would be another issue. Um, but those are, are some of the most common reasons. The focus that I would like, the, the main point I'd like to make in this discussion today is when you are faced with this issue and it is believed to be a spleen tumor in your pet, you are going to be faced with this decision of being all in or saying goodbye. And as I said, it is often a pet that was acting perfectly fine yesterday or maybe even this morning. So that's a lot to process. To provide you some of the statistics of what to expect, so 77-0% of spleen tumors in dogs are aggressive malignant tumors, cancer. And 70% of those are a type called hemangiosarcoma. That is a blood-borne tumor that has statistically already spread elsewhere through the body by the time you diagnose it because it is blood-borne. It's not just sitting in the spleen. The frustrating thing is with surgery, 
your pet may on average live an additional two to three months with no, no other treatments provided. With surgery and chemotherapy, it may be extended up to about six months. Now, if it's a benign growth, like a hematoma, just a blood-filled sac, your pet may continue to live for years and years, but you won't know. Is it an aggressive tumor or is it benign unless you cut it out, unless you go to surgery and biopsy it? There are exceptions. If it has already spread elsewhere in the body and imaging is available, like an ultrasound or CT scan or sometimes x-rays, can help identify additional masses. If there's more than one mass, it is likely an aggressive kind of cancer. If there is no evidence of other masses, there can still be microscopic, tiny, aggressive cells elsewhere in the body. So the real takeaway is when you go into the emergency hospital and you're not really sure if this is as emergent as you were thinking at home and now you're second guessing yourself and saying, I probably could have waited till Monday, my regular vet would see him. But this stranger, this veterinarian gets on the phone with you and gives you this choice that you in no capacity were prepared to make, it can be helpful to have already heard this dialogue, to be a bit more educated about the statistics and aware of your options. And don't forget that in the moment, you're not gonna remember all of this. You're gonna be panicked. It's your baby they're talking about. But again, remembering that you can ask the questions to get that information and you can ask repeatedly. It is very common that when you're faced with an emergency, you blank out and need to hear something a couple of times. Veterinarians are used to that and they should be willing to have that discussion with you as long as we're coming to decisions in a timely manner to treat your pet. So hopefully that will help you better understand both some of the symptoms to watch for at home, that discussion and why you're being asked to do two very extreme different options and better understanding prognosis. You can have all the money in the world and some kinds of tumors are just awful. They're ugly things. Same thing, you may go all in and, and get really lucky, be in that 30% category and have your pup for several more years. But it's important to be aware of the cost benefits, what your pet is going to be going through, and what to expect.